have pioneered Uber Pool solution, which means that more people traveling in the same direction share the same ride. So instead of one car, yeah, instead of three cars, in the end, you have one car carrying three persons. Now, uh, the beauty about Uber Pool is that it's not just eco-friendly, but it's also super convenient and even more affordable than other Uber services. So, with the help of Uber Pool in places like San Francisco and many other cities around the world, we are already saving a lot of the carbon footprint and uh, at the same time making people's life more convenient. And the second really interesting project that I'm personally super excited about is the electric mobility. Now, Uber as a company we believe in shared and electric mobility. That's eventually going to become a self-driving mobility, but for now let's keep it shared and electric. We do electric pilots all across the world. We have one great well-functioning pilot going on right now in Lisbon, in London, to name just a few. So this is something that we would love to bring to the Central and Eastern Europe as well. Um, it's not all to, uh, up to us. It's not enough to have just electric cars. You need to have a proper infrastructure. I'm talking, of course, about charging stations. This is something where the local community can contribute the most and establish an enabling environment for electric mobility to thrive. So we can only do so much, but uh, other stakeholders in this story need to do their part as well. But of course, we're happy to work both with the city council and all everyone else who's willing to actually take on this massive issue of uh, air pollution in cities. I see the divide when it comes to modern regulation and people's perception towards innovative solutions. And this divide is actually something very positive. I think Central and Eastern Europe and Central and Eastern Europeans are much eager to embrace these new solutions and innovations coming from other parts of the world. We are not afraid of change. We've had a fair amount of change in the past 25, year, 25 years. We're not afraid of it, and that's really important. Our policymakers oftentimes aren't afraid of change either, so we can see actually great regulatory progress in the area of ride sharing being made right now in Central and Eastern Europe, but especially in Baltic countries. So, yes, I think there's a difference, but a positive one. About them. Well, they are as we all know, super progressive. Um, they are one of the most innovative countries in the world. When you look at Estonia, it's always ranked number one in all index and other um, high-tech indexes. Uh, these are the countries that understand that technology cannot just, you know, make the, con the, the, con the image of the country better, but also dramatically improve people's lives in various areas, be it healthcare, transportation, or common administrative services offered by the state on a daily basis. So yes, technology can help. We have some really good best practices around Europe that we should copy in other countries as well. You don't need to rediscover the United States. We know how successful projects can be done, both in, terms, both in the area of um, electric mobility or whole-scale digitalization of public administration. This is already well in place in places like uh, Estonia, for example. We all know that transportation contributes over 20% of overall carbon emission. It's actually a sector that is growing, which is even more worrying, so we need to do something about it. Now, ride-sharing is one of the most effective tools to actually combat this problem. According to various studies, one Uber can actually replace up to six private cars um, in cities, not just like Bucharest, but also in Western cities, and that's already very significant. Now, when it comes to numbers, we have many. We are a tech and data company in the end, so we measure uh, pretty much everything. I can tell you some numbers with regards to Uber Pool. Now, um, in the first seven months of 2016 alone, with the help of Uber's pool services, we managed to save more than 300 million miles that would otherwise be driven by 
private cars. Now, this is actually distance that's greater from the one from sea, from earth to the sun. Um, at the same time, we saved over um, 50,000 um, million metric tons of carbon dioxide and so on and so forth. So numbers are truly impressive. You can find them um, on our website and it's actually something that we are very excited about. It's not just about shared mobility as I said in the beginning, it's also about electric mobility and bringing those carbon emissions down to zero.